Hi, my name is Cy Porter and this is another tutorial on animation. And if you would like me to make more of these, please watch one of my free animation projects at solomation.com. And when I see that I'm getting views there, it encourages me to go out and make more of these tutorials. So the animation I'm working on here, I'm actually using <clears throat> motion tracking. And I'm sure I'm, I'm, you might have seen footage of, of how they do it in, in movies where they have, you know, the, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see like those track balls on the actors and that usually involves definitely more than one camera to do. But when doing 2D animation, you've greatly simplified your motion tracking because you don't need to capture three-dimensional movement. You just need to capture two-dimensional movement because you're going to be animating in 2D anyway. And the big hurdle with doing this sort of thing in After Effects is the simple technicality that when a image, you know, be it JPEG or Photoshop image that you bring into After Effects, if it does not have the same pixel dimensions as the project you're working in, then the coordinates of the puppet pins do not match the motion tracking. Th this will become clear later on. Um, it may sound complicated. The simple rule is that you should have all the images you want to animate, be it a hand or an arm. You want to make sure that that image has the same pixel dimensions as the project you're working in. And that's what makes this sort of thing work. So just keep that in mind and it becomes very simple. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how I, st I started it out. Okay, as you can see here, I filmed the footage and what I did is I have pieces of tape here for the wrist, elbow, clavicle, chin, bald forehead, I went in and I created a null object for each point I wanted to track. I want to reiterate that if you go here, you can look at the image files here. I'm clicking over here and, and even though like the hand is definitely a lot smaller than 720 by 1280 dimensions, the pr those are the project dimensions. If I hit Control K, as you can see here, the project dimensions are 1280 high by 720 wide. And every image I bring in, be it every image I want to animate with Puppet Animator, needs to be in those dimensions. That is, that is the key point to making the whole thing work. So I have the images here. Now when I start motion tracking, you know, here is a null object for the hand. And if you go up here, I have the null object. So here's the yellow piece of tape here. For the hand, created the null object, go over to the tracker window, and you can get to that by clicking on Windows and get the tracker window. Do track motion and apply it to the null object. If you want to understand more using the motion tracker, there are a lot of tutorials about how to do that. And I have the hand image in here. So as you can see here, 
here's here's the image file of the hand, and the actual visible hand is is very small compared to the actual size of the image. And I went ahead and did the puppet tool on it and did two pins. And when you do only two pins on an image, it works really well for that image stretching, which is what happens when you get foreshortening in a figure. So even though, like as an example, my arm, even though it may be moving, if it's moving backwards in 3D space, the image isn't moving backwards in 3D space, but it gets shorter being squashed between the two pins. And again, if you want to know how to use the puppet pin tool, there are tutorials for that also. And so if you have an image like an arm or a hand, you put a pin at the one end of, of it and at the other end, and then you can stretch it. So as those two, as the arm goes further back in space, the point of the wrist and the point of the elbow get closer together, optically. And what you want is for those two pinpoints on the arm image to get closer together, to give the optical illusion that the arm is going back in space, when what is happening is that the puppet pin tool is shortening that image. So the basic principle I have, well, let's go ahead and go to the arm tool. What I did is after I created the elbow and wrist, I motion track to the null objects, elbow and wrist. So I have these two null objects that are moving for null and wrist. And then what I did is I went to the arm and if you go, you have these two pins that I created. And one is for, okay, one is for the shoulder and the other is for the elbow and I alt clicked it on, on them and then I use the pick whip to pick whip the position of as an example the elbow for what would be the puppet pin of the elbow point on the arm image repeated it for the shoulder and as I did that, basically these images were pulled to their various moving puppet pinpoints. And that is how you can do 2D motion tracking. And basically you can create very good quality movement of your animations this way because you become a puppeteer who you have have some kind of markers so that when you when you videotape yourself those markers are, are better for motion tracking and I hope that helps um, please leave any questions in the comment box again um, you can encourage me to make more of these by hitting the like button, visiting solomation.com, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.